Hey everyone, this is Semler and you're listening to TCR. Okay, so let's start. Hello. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. Episode 115 coming to you live, pre-recorded from an undisclosed location. The time, 7.48 p.m. Central Standard Time. The date, July 24th, 2018. I am one of your hosts for this evening. My name is Tim. Hello. As always, we are joined by my two best buds in the whole wide world. We have Anuj. Hello, Anuj. Hey, gentlemen. How are y'all? Wonderful. And hello, Brett. Don't leave us, Tim. Don't. I'm going on a trip. Don't leave. We'll talk about it. We will talk about it. And uh, this will be the best episode ever not only am we going to talk about my upcoming new york trip for the overwatch league finals but we're going to talk about said finals but before we get into that follow us on social media at the center ring on twitter tcr.gg for the website hit us up our discord email everything is there youtube twitch instagram instagram that a new active hustling getting them follows and everything that you need to be all relevant with the millennials as they say but i think that's it that's all i got follow us on uh twitter and stuff but let's get into this overwatch league finals because i think uh you know it's pretty much what everyone predicted right philly yeah. and london that's i think that's what yeah, we all yeah, said totally. at the beginning of the season yeah, totally. Yeah, I, we we didn't get that wrong at all. No, no, not at all. All right. We said fusion a couple of us in the last episode, right? That would count as something. Well, I, we're talking about like at the beginning of the season. I like, think it's pretty much what I had. When... Once you go back and pull the audio. Yeah, right. Yeah, I will we'll go not back to the audio. you because I'm pretty sure this is what I had. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> before we talk about London and the Philadelphia Fusion, who have qualified for the finals and they will be playing in Brooklyn. I do want to bring up the the semis because, and I don't want to dive too far into it, but it is relevant to discuss New York and their downfall. Um, all season long, NYXL looked to be poised to be the best team. While well, they were in the, they were for the, throughout the entire season the best team in the league, hands down. I think maybe what after week three. I think people realize like, oh, these guys are actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they won like two stages. So, right. Yeah. You know, you're searching, right. If you want to talk about that, we can. Because they said that I I heard their fans and everything bring that up uh, after they were eliminated saying like, man, you know what, though? We still won two stages. (laughs) That don't mean anything. (laughs) Good. Good for you, man. Good Good for for you. You won two (laughs) stages that did absolutely nothing for you other than like a participation medal at the end of the year. Like it does. And I had a beef during the season with those stage wins because all, yeah, I get it. They hype it up and it's cool for the players because they win more money. And I guess you could say that you were the best player at, you know, three quarters of the way or the best team three quarters of the way through the season. But at Mm. the end of the day, it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. I mean, your, your team, like it's a weird mindset when you had the best team all season long. I mean, if you look back at their record, 34 and 6, uh, they had a plus 83 map differential. Uh, the next closest team to them was the Valiant at 36. So, I mean, it was almost 50, a, a plus 50 on everybody else. I mean, you're just like killing it all season and then you lose the way you did, you know, getting 2 0'd. It's just not a not a good you know not a good look. It's just it's tough. 
And I think people can use the excuse of like, well, it's the new patch, right? Uh, For better or for worse. And we'll discuss this more next week when we kind of just recap the whole season. Um, Right. Which, by the way, will be live on the ticket, 96.7 FM, if you are in the DFW area or the ticket.com if you want to listen online. Uh, We'll discuss next week, kind of recap the whole season, our thoughts on meta changes. Um, Was it really right of Blizzard to... Introduce a new patch going into the playoffs. Uh, you know, it seems a bit poor timing, but every team had to deal with it. So it wasn't like one team was at a, you know, unfair advantage or, or anything there. But for the first time all year long, I think you saw New York struggle to adjust. Yeah. I mean, they, like you said, Tim, they brought in that new patch where, you know, Hanzo got a buff. Uh, they played Philly, who had like the one guy that used him pretty much the whole playoffs in EQO and he wrecked face with them and they didn't use him. And I mean, that, that was kind of kind of like a tilting point, you know, for that, for that match was that uh, they couldn't keep up with the DPS of, of Philly. So yeah, I mean, it hurt him. Definitely. I was, I think it was like what XQC tweeted out saying like all these people trying to make excuses for New York about the patch and everything. And it's like, they just got rolled, which to yeah. simply put, they did. I mean, to Philly's credit again, yeah, they were good, but no one thought they were beating New York. No, no. one. I mean, even, unless, even with them, unless you just yeah. wanted to make the fancy pick and, and say it just to say it like a nuge, yeah. and then that way he can come no, on here and be like... It is a little bit of both, though. Wouldn't you feel like part of it is, yes, you did get rolled, because like you said, everybody had to deal with the patch. But an update coming out right before the playoffs is probably not the best move either, right? Like, it could completely yeah. change the game. Look at how everyone looked at Dallas Field going into the season, and then the tank meta came out, and it completely destroyed their hopes to do anything long-term. Obviously, didn't help that, you know, XQC was was gone and supposed to be one of their better players in that role. But right. Yeah. There's a lot still, but, like it. Yeah. It makes yeah, a difference. But, it changes how yeah. you play. And, and that's for why for better or for worse. Tonight, right. I, I, and I, I get that, but you still have Neko and Mecco on your team. Like two of the best tanks in the league in that kind of meta. We, I just, I wasn't expecting that, no. that, kind, that type of performance. I mean, they, they have the depth on that team to be, awesome in any meta and philly was just more prepared it's kind of interesting because at the beginning of this season we talked about how um how is it going to work with bigger rosters and and players having to sub in and out right what if you just have a group that's killing it together but this Mm -hmm. shows exactly why you need that depth right you know a, Mm -hmm. a big change happens or something that changes the meta better have some people if they're not performing be able to swap in and out into different roles that are needed at that time so um it's kind of cool how that comes into play. I just the, the timing is still odd, though. Yeah, I agree. And when at the end of the the season, you have New York here. I, I put this in our Discord. They had four stage final appearances, two stage victories. They got the league MVP in Jonak. They have like f- I think five World Cup players on their roster. Yeah, and then they get swept in the playoffs, and then it's it's game over, and they're going home. Uh, pretty. I don't know. I, from the New York fans that I've talked to, like they are still have their head high and they're still proud of their team. Um, but I think for being the first inaugural playoffs ever for Overwatch League, definitely a huge upset, especially since the finals are in New York. Yeah, they're in your backyard. It's, like yeah, that, it was, uh, yeah, we were talking about it. The the American sports curse, right? Like you can't. You can't play a championship in your own city in this country for whatever reason. No, it was reason. set up for New York, and uh, <laughs> they blew it. They they simply blew it yeah. without adjusting. I think, and we'll move on to to London and the Philly match coming up here. But to I think a news you you just said it where it was like, you know, this meta didn't complement New York's roster. They didn't have the guys to adjust. And I I think I agree with you on that sense because if you look at where like New York's strengths have been. For the majority of the year, I mean, obviously, Jonak being a support, but he's also, like, oddly enough, one of the best DPS in the league playing as a Zenyatta. They had very good DPS players throughout the entire year. And now it's weird that in this meta, where you can get away with having 
a Hanzo and a Widow on certain maps and no one thinks twice about it, that's where you're hurting. I don't know if yeah. it's the Brigetta that's throwing them off. Yeah, and, and I agree with you, Tim. Like, that has been their strength the entire season with, you know, Pine, Sabiobli, uh, you know, those type those guys, you know, just dominating the league the whole year. But you mentioned Jonak. That was, this this current meta is is probably what hurt him the most when it comes to Jonak because you can't play a Zenyatta on some maps. You know, he had to flex to a Roadhog a few times, getting out of his comfort zone, so you didn't have that. You know that that badass at at healer and Zenyatta, it kind of took it away from him this this meta. So yeah, you know I, I I can see it, but at the end of the day, I still feel like they they should they have had won. the roster. To they should have won. No yeah no doubt. I mean yes, meta can make a difference, but no doubt if you have that type of roster, you should have you should have won. Right. right. Going to the teams that did win, that was our in in memoriam for NYXL. And you the five have, deadly pinups. Yeah, which uh, I will see this weekend. Or I yeah. guess uh, tomorrow. You do have yeah. Philadelphia playing versus London Spitfire in the finals. I'm excited. I mean, I, I'm a fan of London Spitfire being that they're cloud nine. I have that kind of, you know, homerism in me that I can't shake <laughs> for whatever reason. Right. Um, but also they you were... were forced into picking them last week, though. Don't forget that either. Oh, you just <laughs> fell into my trap. That's all. I was, uh, I was yeah, just trying right. to fool you guys. <laughs> you were goaded. You were oh, man. I will say this, though. London Spitfire was a early on like a top three team, right? So for them to be in the finals isn't that big of a surprise. Uh, yes, they've had a lot of uh, roster moves because you keep in mind at the start of the season, they signed on two of the best, if not the two best Korean squads full-on squads remember we were saying well this is weird because you just you have a full you know six guys who play together and another six guys to play together how is that going to mesh combining two teams together and then swapping them out where you already have allegiances so you got to they they dropped fissure they dropped rascal and uh Rascal going to, you know, Dallas, Fissure going to mm-hmm. Gladiators. We talked a little bit about his drama going on there, um, you know, after their match and everything. Were you going to yeah. say something, Brett? It's, yeah, it's half that roster is, or, you know, the half the starting roster. Well, not even half. I mean, four of the, the seven that they have left on their team weren't even on the team at the beginning of the season, I don't think. So, well, yeah, they, they had they turnaround. Have, right, yeah. So they have a... You know, they only have like seven active players according to their their wiki page, which I assume is and and updated. the official Overwatch page. Yeah, too. so you could see that London has definitely. I think they started the season out with the expectation of, hey, we're gonna just hire their or we're gonna sign the best players and then we'll figure it out till then. I think they've definitely um, have achieved that with, uh, you know, Birdering being one of the best DPS out there. I'm, I'm looking forward to the matchup between Birdring and Profit versus Carpe. And I guess if you want to throw EQO in there as a deciding factor, but I really do think it's going to rely on the DPS on who's going to win in the finals because that's where you're really looking at the difference there. I mean, I guess you could say Bedosin being a support for London Spitfire yeah. because I think, what so- was it, like, midway whenever we did our was it our stage one recap we did on the ticket last time i think we were talking about but and jonak being like our stage one mvps yeah so so let's look at it Let, let's let's look at dps support and tanks like just kind of break those matchups down and see you know kind of kind of where each team stands so we had we had just brought up dps uh more to your point tim i, I agree with you I, I think i think ultimately this match is going to come down you know a few of these maps a few of these important maps are going to come to down to a widow duel you know who's going to win that duel between birdring and carpe um i feel like which we kind of I always like, knew that was going to be the case with this new yeah, patch yeah i i feel like i feel like carpe you know he he he's a highlight reel but I feel like Birdring is the more consistent mm-hmm. of the two. So just looking fair. at that, 
yeah, just looking at that DPS pool, I, I would give the edge to the Spitfire in that regard. You know, because they have they have profit that can play, you know, up in the front with a tracer, Genji, <laughs> Farah. I mean, his player pool is ridiculous. It's insane. So, so looking looking at tank then, who would you give the edge to? I, I want to say Philly because of Fraggy, but I don't know if that's just because I like him as a person. Yeah, and, and Fraggy hasn't really played as much. He, he hasn't played in the playoffs at all uh, right. this entire time. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I look at I look at the, the tanks, just the way the tanks have played in the playoffs, and I give that edge to Philly. I mean, even though they're, they're kind of – it's weird. They're swapping out Hotba and, and Poco. Hotba played the bulk of the games at off-tank with D.Va, and Poco's playing D.Va as well. I feel like they're using Poco on more like hybrid maps, you know, like a, a like payload maps, hybrid maps, um, and using Hotbone pretty much everything else. They've both been awesome uh, in, in this playoffs. And you have Sato as the main tank, who is just insane. So, I mean, just looking at that matchup, I, I, I would give it to Philly too as well. I think the and fusion kind of take that barely though. Yeah, I mean, it's... The tanks are hard to judge because they they're just not don't flashy. Make it. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's... you you really kind of need to just go and watch vods and kind of only look at like if they made it to where I could only follow like if I could control the camera right and I could yeah. just follow one tank around just so I could watch him. I think that would be the ultimate, uh, yeah, the ultimate way to watch Overwatch is where I can select who I'm gonna watch. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like watching a football game where, you know, uh, you know, it's a sweet play and the running back, you know, goes to the outside and he's got the lead blocker there that doesn't really show up in the camera. And the only reason that running back breaks a 70 yard touchdown is because of that lead block. Tanks are the same way. You don't you don't really see a whole lot of what they do. They don't light so up the kill feed, but flash. it's important. Yeah. Yeah. They're just but Philly, they, they won't. Yeah. And looking into the support, I would have to say, in my opinion, I'd, I'd go with the Spitfire just because of Bodosan. I know Boombox yeah. is, is legit, but I would have yeah. to go with, uh, with Bodosan. Yeah, I, I, I believe that the Philly have the best Mercy, which is pretty much an auto pick in this playoffs. I mean... Nuss is not a not anything to like you know sh shake your finger at or anything like that. But um, you nailed it, Tim. I they have in in a lot of these maps uh, they're going to they'll, they'll switch to like a, a one support meta mm -hmm. where you know you have you know three tanks, one support, and then your DPS. And Which London did Spitfire that a lot. Had, they did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it on King's Row? King, versus, well, they'll do it on King's Row, and they'll do it on Junkertown as well. LA Valiant, so. they they were rocking one support for a long time, and just mm -hmm. made LA Valiant look ridiculous. Yeah, we didn't even yeah, talk so, about them in in the past, but the LA Valiant Spitfire game was a train wreck from an LA point of view. Yeah, I mean, this entire playoffs, London Spitfire have only dropped one map. One map. That's it. They've been dominating. And and Bedosin's a big part of that with his little uh, with his flex role, you know, to be able to be um, a great healer, um, a, a fantastic Zenyatta, but also play that you know that off tank too, you know, to to deal that extra damage when when really all you need is one support, you know. So yeah, I I would I would give the edge to London in that regard. I think they have the the edge as far as supports go, for sure. So, so overall, because we kind of broke it down with you know the players and everything there, I think overall London is is kind of the favorite going into this finals. I think they are the stronger mm -hmm. team. Looking at just the playoffs alone, which is honestly all you can kind of look at because it's the only example on this this patch. It's kind of unfair to look at even stage four, let alone looking back at the beginning of the season, how a team played when it's a completely different game at this point. Um, I think London has looked really good on this new meta and this new patch. 
I think they have been the most original with it. You know, running that one support build and actually making it effective. Uh, mm. I think they have been the more uh, efficient team and more creative on how they beat it. Because I think you can kind of use the excuse when it comes to Philadelphia that New York did just kind of blow it. You know, it, like, yes, Philly played well, but I think you can say New York blew it rather than Philly dominated. Where with London Spitfire, they dominated. Like, sure, yeah. LA Valiant looked bad, but that's because London made them look bad. Yeah, I mean, the reason Philly are where they are is because of EQ and Carpe just being awesome. But, I mean... They've been great this playoffs, but they're going to even have to elevate that to a whole nother level because like the London Spitfire, like you said, Tim, in this current meta, they are, they are insane. I mean, uh, they, the Valiant's the only team that's taken a map. Um, you know, you can look at it and well, you know, the last time Philly played London, uh, you know, the last game of, of stage four, they beat them. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you know, like you said, different patch, different meta. I'm a real, even in CS, I'm I'm just a big believer in momentum, right? Mm -hmm. Just carrying you, and and London have that right now. Like they're they're firing on all cylinders on all three phases of the Overwatch game. So, you know, I and guess I'm, you know if you're I'm doing a prediction now, give me give me London. In, in three taking it i wonder if it's odd it feels odd to say this but i'm taking philly for the same reason brett's almost taking london because can you come in any higher than like coming off of a win versus the best team in the league to now make it to the finals like you just overcame your biggest hurdle um nobody gave you a chance in that game i feel like you get to go into the finals almost feeling a little bit more loose obviously it's a little different because there's going to be the mayhem of the event and, and all that going on. But I think they're riding really high on momentum right now too. And it, it wouldn't surprise me if they came away with the W. I agree with y'all. London is a bit, you know, looks like the better team on paper. They, they played well. Um, but I think Philly's coming in hot and they broke in my heart twice this year with the NFL championship. I feel like they're <laughs> now going to do it again. And I don't, I don't, do it would you break think my heart to see. The city I also think even acknowledges it if they win. They're equals to me. I look at the Eagles in the same way I look at. But Overwatch does the teams. city like? Do you think the city of Philadelphia will maybe like a parade like, down a suburban like a street? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> those fans are crazy. But I don't... maybe they give. It wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise if Philly. If Philly was gonna. If a city was gonna do it, it wouldn't surprise me if it's Philly. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, fans they're, are they're crazy pretty, over there. They'll do anything. They, they're they're pretty insane. Uh, during during the uh, the semifinals at the Blizzard Arena. So, would it be, maybe that be more weird? Carries, Philly but, getting two championships in a year? It's not going to happen. Nine. It can't happen. Champions. That city doesn't deserve any more champions. Do you yeah, think Tim saw two favorite. Cloud Nine championships coming in one year? <laughs> <laughs> if you so, told him that at the beginning of the year, man. I um. Going to my prediction, I agree with. I mean, both of you make fantastic points. Uh, both teams I know, I know this... have momentum in their own argument. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm I a professional broadcaster. Be an coming I, here. I'm a professional broadcaster, so I I grind it out. I do the research. I stay up late. I make phone calls. I talk to sources. I get the mm -hmm. inside scoop. Mm -hmm. And I think this will be the easiest grand finals in Overwatch League history. I think the London Spitfire are going to destroy Philadelphia. It, like, you won't even, it'll be like, you'll blink and then it'll be like, oh my god, dude, what's the finals here? What just happened? <laughs> it's six straight maps. That's what you're predicting. Tim's flying home Saturday night instead of Sunday. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming home yeah. early. I'm coming home early. Oh. 
I also love the uh, proud to be an American for the London Spitfire. But we all know they're Cloud Nine. We all know they're Cloud Nine. <laughs> we all know. Uh, you, need, you need some God Save the Queen. <laughs> yeah, that, there you go. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, look, to be honest, if we're being real, I think... I think London Spitfire is the better team, as I already said, so I'm going to give them the win. I won't be surprised either way, though. With the way these playoffs have shaken out, uh, after New York getting bounced by Philly 2-0, mm-hmm. albeit they took it to the fifth map, still a 2-0 at the end of the day, get, I wouldn't be surprised me, no matter what. Give me three three rounds. Oh, like, I think it's going to go three, three maps no matter what. Yeah, No matter who wins... Uh, yeah, I think you'll see it go three maps, no doubt. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to see another two zero, especially because in this the will also in the be. First year. You, you got to also remember that you got to take in the factor of nerves here, right? These are mm-hmm. kids or guys or whatever that have been playing in it's, the Blizzard Arena, which is a nice arena. It, it holds a good crowd, but you're going to the Barclay Center in Brooklyn now, which is sold out. Sold that, out. That, Two hundred dollars yeah. just to get the cheapest ticket. That's insane. So yeah. I th- I don't know. I it will be interesting to see, you know, if whoever wins that Friday matchup, how they go into Saturday. Are you are you going to see nerves? Are you going to see them, you know, focused in? How many New York fans are on Craigslist trying to sell tickets right yeah, now? Yeah, I wonder that. Yeah, like, like yeah. I bet you. Those tickets so were 200 New bucks York when they fans. thought they were going to make it. <laughs> like, yeah. What exactly. about now? Uh, what, are, what are those tickets now, homie? What are you, what are you selling put it for? This way. Dota could probably be going for about 50 to 75 here pretty <laughs> yeah, soon. Could probably get it. I mean, Philly, I think Philly, though, is not too too far. You know, no, it's not I mean, at all. That's, that's yeah, not yeah, far not, at all. So I think you'll see yeah. a lot of Philadelphia. There'll, fans. Be, there'll be a buyer base for it. It's yeah. just it's not going to be the New York fans right now. Kind of curious to see with London, though. They do have Cloud9, so I wonder how, you know, if that translates over as much as it does with me, but it'll be cool. Uh, as far as the weekend goes, uh, they're doing, again, it's a best of three with game one being on Friday at 6 o'clock. Uh, that's central time. So 7 o'clock Eastern? Yeah, 7 o'clock Eastern, yeah. All right. I should probably know that, considering I've been scheduling it, that it's been 6. Look at your I'm itinerary, wrong. Tim. I do, bro. I printed. I'm gonna keep that thing with me. I'm gonna print out two copies and keep one in both pockets. Uh, and on Saturday, you have at four o'clock Eastern game two, and at six game three if it has to be played. Yeah. So they're doing again the and, best of three. Yeah, and the games Friday uh, can be watched on ESPN and Disney XD. <laughs> <laughs> if you're at a bar, you probably want to ask for, for the bartender Dude, to turn on so ESPN. On uh, Saturday, I was doing a radio show with my buddy, and he was like, yeah, man, I was flipping around, and I saw Overwatch on the TV guide, and uh, I figured I'd watch it. I forget what channel it was on, though. And I'm like, oh, I know what channel it was on. All right. I right, want to know, to... why were you flipping around <laughs> Cartoon Network and Disney to... XD? <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, it was on both channels during the semifinals. Because I did the same thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to... And I was like, I'm curious. I just want to flip over to ESPN just to just to see if it's there. It's there. All right. Okay. Yeah, so Friday, and it's on uh, Big Boy ESPN. Surely, yeah, yeah, though, it's, <sighs> correct me if I'm wrong. I know on the website it says here on TV, Friday, 7 p.m. ESPN. There mm-hmm. is... That's on tape delay, though, right? I think they said they're... Mm, no. Oh, no, no, so. no. Saturday's game on ESPN2 is a re-air for game day for uh, the finals on Saturday. Damn. So big boy ESPN at 7 o'clock on Friday? Yeah. I mean, that's like prime time, dude. That is. I mean, it's yeah. Friday. So as far as networks go, that's kind of like the worst time of your week. But we won't get yeah. into that. That's 7 o'clock. That yeah. is prime you take, time. You take that either way. Yeah. that's. I didn't. Okay. I guess when I originally read the article, I thought it was going to be uh, re-air, but that's only for Saturday's game. Yep. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty stoked now. I can tell my friends to turn on ESPN and not Disney XD. (laughs) (laughs) We're fine. Yeah. Uh, I will remind our listeners, if you are going to the finals, I will be there. Uh, Not a new Brett. So they only pick the best. They only pick the best. 
That's why they picked the show. Uh-huh. That's yeah, right. That, yeah. That's right. The show is going. That's how I phrase it. I am representing TCR. But I will be there. I'm flying out tomorrow, and I'll be there around 2. I got nothing going on tomorrow. I am going to Waypoint Cafe to see our friends from Five Deadly Venom. So if you're going there tomorrow night, hit me up. They're doing like a deal. It's like 3 bucks an hour to play some games. So maybe I'll play some Overwatch in public. Maybe not, because I'll probably lose some friendships. So... You know, we'll we'll see how that see how I'm feeling. You know, um, <laughs> I get heated. What can I say? Uh huh. Yeah, that's one word for it. And uh, that's really it. Uh, Thursday, it's a full day of media day, and then I will be there Friday and Saturday in person to watch the matches. I'll be walking around the arena, probably taking it all in, taking some photos. Seeing what's up, seeing what free free stuff I can get, so because that's the only reason I'm going is to get the free stuff, um, <laughs> and the only reason they have me going is because next Wednesday, August first at seven p.m. Central Time, again we are doing a live show on the Ticket, uh, which is the sports radio station here in DFW that I work at, number one sports station in the country. Uh, running for the Marconi station of the year this year. No big deal. And and that's not like him fluffing it up. Okay. That's like legit. Yeah. Like I'm not giving you right now. I'm not even it's like, not like, it's not like, <laughs> yeah, we're the best, you know, we're the best. No, that's Our a fact. MNT1C, that's like a fact he's giving you right there. That a fact we are up for the Marconi for best overall station of the year this year, not just sports overall. Uh, now ask me how little I had to do with it. It's about 0.01%. But uh, you know what? The resume don't have to say that. The resume just says Marconi. Um, what else? You guys got anything else for the finals? I, I will say this. Nope. One thing that I am looking forward to going to see a Blizzard event in person is the stage. Because like you've seen it, like the BlizzCon stages that they've had for like StarCraft and World of Warcraft and stuff. And I mean, even the Blizzard Arena alone, that stage is pretty awesome. So I'm really hoping, and I was telling Brett this the other day at work, like, you know how Anuj in Dota, uh, like the international, it's not just the biggest tournament of the year, but Valve really makes it a celebration of the game. You know, yeah, like, like they do with CS. Yeah, same thing, but even more so no, like with Dota. No, I was joking completely. Okay. I was no, yeah, with Dota is incredible. The way yeah. they do it, with the holograms. I mean, they go the all out. The holograms, they got the everything cosplay, into Dota. Music yeah, yeah, going sure. on. They put everything in Dota, so it's a big it's celebration. It's truly an event. Game. It's not yeah. just the game. You go it's to like a Counter Strike just... tournament, and you, you know, here's a pin for 25 bucks. We got <laughs> limited mouse pads for you. Uh, so, no, they don't do the same thing for Counter Strike. Or here's our extra small Cloud9 shirts that are left. Yeah, right. Uh, but they make Dota like the main attraction, right? And it's it's huge and it's a celebration of the game. Even people who might not follow the esports scene will watch the TI because they know it's Dota, right? It's the best players in the world. So they'll watch this one tournament. I'm really hoping I go there and I just am immersed with Overwatch stuff. You know, like not just merch, but even if it's like, statues or whatever you know something to i want it to be a celebration just of the game make it over the top like yes. just make it like you're i want going, that walking stage into an amazing vegas casino type like, thing. like, like you're I'm walking into as, blizzard yeah. world exactly yes i want to be yeah. inside of blizzard world i want to spend stupid money on stupid merch that i won't need and i'll regret uh but i want to be caught up in the emotion to where it's okay to buy you know little mini figurines that i can clip on my backpack and you know, never show in public. So I, I, <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to the trip. And, uh, we are really, really thankful for the league for inviting the show out there and even thinking about the show. That's pretty, uh, like somebody important had to say our, our show's name. Yeah. Like someone like it had to come out of their mouth, <laughs> had to like, it had to, to come out of their mouth and say our name. And that's, that's a pretty awesome feeling. I know, you know, it's hard to see it on the other end, but we, we really do put a lot of work and, care into the show so to get yes. an opportunity like this we're we're super thankful for and um, we joke about it just, but uh we do put a lot of work in it and we also got to thank our listeners because without the listeners uh well you know what our listeners really had nothing to do with blizzard but i appreciate them nonetheless 
I don't know if maybe they called Blizzard. Maybe. If you know who you are, though, I love you I guys. Forget it. what Tim says. <laughs> Me and Brett are fully in love with all of our listeners. The ones I love that tweet our listeners. Us, the I'm ones just, that follow us on Discord. We, you know, just we love playing. the interaction, and and it's it's been a it's been a fun ride. It's crazy to see where we've come in one year as a unit for us three. Obviously, it's been around longer, but as we all know, the show was dead prior to us joining. Yeah, it started. Um, so it's cool to see board. what Brett and I have been able to do and really turn this ship around, as they say. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. It was you guys all along. <laughs> Let's get into some E! News, though, shall we? Uh, It's either been a light week or we just didn't really care to look. All the teams have been finalized for the CSGO Major. Just giving timing. We're going to do a major preview next week on air on the ticket so we'll dedicate a segment or two talking about the teams that have qualified and the teams that have failed uh i see brett put up his ninja's jersey on the wall again so that must mean they ended up qualifying they're back baby just when i was losing faith just when i was losing faith they pulled me back in i don't know if y'all saw but get rubbing it get right cried that means we're going gold I'm already excited. It was it was so fun to see their celebration just on like Instagram and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It was like it was it was really cool because I think they were genuinely excited to be a part of it. And that this is like, you know, kind of the majors, just the extended major, you know, part of it. They but get still, stickers. They're there. Yeah, they're it excited. It, it's it fun. Is. And it's just the way they've been playing. You just saw it on their face, like. They have they've probably been trashed by Nip fans and just everyone saying, Hey, blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. And you could just see the look on their faces. Well, like, and they, oh my God, they did, did what it. Virtus Pro I, I I'm gonna quickly retort what I'm saying here, okay, because I totally get it. They're doing what Virtus Pro couldn't do, and that's bounce back. Yes, I get it, Virtus Pro is still in the major, but that's only off of a technicality and because they made top eight last year. But uh, it's not from anything they've done recently. Exactly. They are not in the major for their recent performance. And there is no way that they make it this time around. But we'll talk more about that next week um, as uh, we do our live show from the ticket and uh, talk a little about CSGO major coming up in London. The face it major, that is. In uh, other news here, we talked a little bit about Fortnite last week and how their first official tournament was a fiasco. Well, fans of Fortnite, they know that they do the Friday night skirmish? Friday night skirmish? Every Friday? Yeah, Fortnite Friday is with Keemstar. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so they do this every every week. And I guess someone explained this to me. So they do a console tournament, a PC, mixed? They do a mixed tournament. Essentially, it's duos you and one teammate along and then you get paired against two other people but what they do when they pair you y'all y'all squad up as four and then you land and do whatever you want to do and essentially it's most kills slash placement of points that are involved in it advance to the next round so because right now they don't they're not giving them custom servers right so these guys are all queuing up versus two players that they're paired against and you advance that way until you get to the final round and so it's 2v2 but you're paired into a squads team you land and there's rules like you can't um so do you fight your other other squad no you're you're avoiding you're not avoiding each other but you can't kill them right you're technically playing as a unit but not together right so it's like you both are going off in your own direction um and then it goes by kills ultimately. Like who has which pair has the most awfully kills. confusing. It's which pair has the most kills is the easiest way to okay. put it. So when it's two v two, whichever pairing has the most kills at the end of the game, it adds up and goes. You know, they play like three. To not get bogged down, I'm like sure that. there's a reason they don't just do duos, but we'll we'll go with yeah. it. Yeah, so you can queue in the same match with another team. You can't randomly queue and pray that you get the same game versus the team you're playing against. Right. They want you to play against the same competition, essentially. Okay. So it's it's somewhat of a level playing field that way. Okay. All right. No so in short, though, what ended up happening was eye drops. 
right? Mm -hmm. Is that the guy that is in question here? The winner. Yeah, yeah. I drops. Yeah, yeah, I drops bodies. Uh, winner of the 500k tournament was pretty quickly after <laughs> called out for for cheating using a mouse and keyboard on an Xbox, which, again, correct me if I'm wrong, it kind of enhances the aim assist that is naturally on the console edition. It, it's hilarious. not the same. I've played it. I've done it. I mean, that's how I played on my console before I played on PC. I was going to say, from guys. someone who uses a mouse and keyboard on console. Yeah, I use a mouse, and, and they allow it. It works that way. You plug it. You just plug it in directly into your PS4. I'm not using it, the Zim adapter or anything in this case. It's plugged directly into your PS4, and then it, it recognizes it, right? Like the PS4 knows, the game knows. So um, I don't really feel like it enhances the aim assist. I do feel like if you're a PC player... It does make it obviously a little bit easier for you, but I I think the console players are actually really good in Fortnite. Um, it's it's not like they're bad. I feel like um. So what's the weapons, cheating aspect of this then? The cheating aspect is they're questioning if he's hacking or not, or if there was some sort of cheating allegation because his record showed that he only had one like twenty. Kill okay, game so it before. wasn't because of the mouse and keyboard. That was part of it. People they're were just saying that he used it. Yeah, but they're saying because like, of mouse and keyboard, it might be easier to use it for hacks or whatever. Not for hacks. So they're saying like, oh, he had people queue in the same game as him, right? So he found a way to get people to queue into the same game as him. Yeah. And so there was like different. Everyone was making all these allegations that basically Fortnite came out, made a statement, debunked all of this, showing that like this is the data that we have. We have all this data to show this. Um, I think people were just really surprised that it wasn't ninja or it wasn't you know tifu or one of right, those it was a relatively no it. name guy yeah and and it was it was those it was guys like tifu right tifu had the video where he was watching eye drops bodies i hate that name by the way uh he was watching a video of him playing <laughs> Especially and it was if you a look shotgun at duel it. and it was like a 10 second shotgun fight from up close and they were just missing each other. Yeah, but I see that happen bad. with like a lot of Fortnite streamers, like stuff like that just happens. And I don't know. I mean, yeah. you have, you had better have like damn good proof that this yeah. guy is cheating and not but, just throw to me. It felt like the community was really just salty yeah. that it wasn't a big name player. And it was like kind of a Joe Schmo that came in here and won this i don't think people were excited I mean, about that ultimately i think it just really comes down to like epic like fortnite from a competitive standpoint hasn't really had a good start i, I like ninja's tournament that all-nighter that all-night tournament that he did that was that was but, nice but, but it was fortnite smooth. fridays man are huge they yeah. are like, i mean it is drawing in crazy numbers you think overwatch numbers 100k is good they're getting this on like Friday nights in like duos games, you know, with squads games, like they're pulling insane numbers for these, for these matches. That one was bad, but like the celebrity pro-am tournament they did was like a complete hit. I'm not even playing Fortnite that much anymore. And still, I know, like, I think they will really be fine long-term. Like, I don't think they're going to have, it's got to be a competition that beats them. I don't think they're going to kill themselves. I should say, um, mm -hmm. I think ultimately they'll be fine unless something else comes out that just takes over the internet like they have. But when we say it's been a bad start, it was really that one tournament that was off kilter, but they've held a couple yeah, other I mean, pro you can, and stuff. You can't that argue that it's really been a well. bad start. It's just not a worrisome start. Like, no one's worried, right? Yeah, like, like it you just, can't, they had a, they had a bad a tournament. <laughs> But like calling off like, a, tur a ten game tournament four games in is is a bad start. That's rough. That's rough. Yeah, yeah like that, <laughs> no that, that was a bad, that. a bad tournament. But they've had yes. other good events. Like yeah. they've held other good events that have done really well, pulled in good numbers, and they haven't had. Listen, issues. if we were ready to pull the ripcord after every bad tournament, Counter Strike would have been done a long in time 1999, ago. <laughs> dude, it would have been gone. The first year. It would have been gone a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. So it's just interesting that you know. Two weeks in a row, you have these these stories about Fortnite, and you know it's when you have a game that popular, you're gonna have a lot of stories. More bigger player base, bigger problems. More Pretty money, much, more problems. people came across as super salty with him winning. Yeah, it also doesn't help though that a streamer isn't streaming during a tournament and just magically wins. But you know, that, yeah, there there like are that. signs <laughs> that uh, hmm, 
Why weren't you? Look, you just, I feel like you gotta have booster. some proof. Like the whole Flusha argument in Counter Strike. Oh, he cheats. He cheats. Like, prove it. Somebody's gotta prove right. it, whether it's the game creator or somebody else. Like, you gotta prove it. Right. And I think time will also fight his case, right? If all of a sudden in the next tournament he plays a little better or, you know, top 10 or whatever. Or yeah, it's consistency. Okay. Will... Like, you don't have to, you're not gonna win every time, right? Yeah, just... consistency will be his, his biggest uh, friend at this point. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And honestly, I don't care what they say about him anyways. Nips in the major or whatever. Boom. That will do it for this episode of The Center Ring. 115 in the books. Thank you so much for listening. If you listened throughout the whole thing, I love you. If you skipped around, I love you all the same. We will be back next week again live on Sports Radio 1310 and 96.7 FM The Ticket in DFW uh, it's on iHeartRadio you know iHeart.com if you just look up The Ticket uh, theticket.com you can listen to the live stream I actually recommend iHeart stream it's a little better than the official one uh, but you can listen live we'll do Twitter segments and everything so you can be a part of the show for sure uh, that will be back next week, though, as we preview the Face It Major for CSGO. We'll recap not only the finals, but we'll really talk about Overwatch League Season 1 as a whole, right? Our thoughts and, and everything there. Uh, my trip to the finals. Maybe we'll have some good stories and audio from that. Uh, but again, that's next week. So follow us on Twitter at The Center Ring to keep up with that. And our website, tcr.gg, for all the Discord and all that. Uh, we might actually be getting a challenge bracket for the major, so we'll touch on that next week. But for Anuj, for Brett, I'm Tim. Bye.